Good afternoon, everyone. Praise the Lord and thank you so much for being in Zoom meeting. Let me begin by giving you a warm welcome to the Headhouse webinar series episode eight. And our topic today about Jesus Hills while we serve in pandemic era. And today we have one as follow with opening song and we song together. I will go team our team song and opening prayer by Pastor Laskar Simla. After that, music offering delivered by DPTV Focal Group. Introduction to the speaker and presentation for our speaker today, Dr. Joyce King and Dr. Grace Lego. After that, the room for question answer. And after the answering the question, presentation of certificate of appreciation to the speaker from our leader from the SS Streets. Announcement. After that, closing song by Gabriel Hoffer and closing prayer by Dr. Kasmin Mingolan. Okay. Sing song. I will do our team song. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, thank you, Lord, for your blessing. To us, we will start the program and this time. I know it's of us in following this event. Also, blessing speakers in covering your trust in Jesus. Name we pray. Amen. Oh, children, be on your guard. We're living in a time when the last message is. The message to be given to the people of all nations. The message of God's mercy, revelation of His love. Let those who wait for His coming are firmly, gently saying, Be on your God. 
song Kabanga Sisters and now I have time to to our speakers I have two speakers today and the first is Dr. Joyce Tubing Malaw her education background Bachelor of Medicine from North Sumatra University. In 1982-1990, as a general practitioner, as a medical from North Sumatra University, Medan, 1992, and specialist of in gynecology from Mamsi, Manila, Philippines. And head surgery training at Mandu, Nepal, getting to in 2002 and five months from some training at Santo Thomas University and Hospital of Philippines in 2000 and adaptation specialist of genes from the University of University in Jakarta six until 2009 and 
the work experience is a medical staff at the Bandung Adventist Hospital from 1992 until 1995. PTT at PKM Serang Sagala Subang. Nineteen ninety five until nineteen ninety eight, and as medical staff at Bandung from nineteen ninety eight until two thousand. Upgrading program to the Manila Adventist Medical Center College, MMC, for the specialization program of gym in Manila, Philippines, from two thousand until two thousand five, and join the adaptation program at. Uh, Indonesian University 2006 until 2009 2007 because any problem about the Sabbath of seven in Indonesian about uh, for the test only by only be taken Sunday on 2009, and as a medical staff from Bandung Adventist Hospital from 2000 until 2019, as a head of the connect team of the Bandung Adventist Hospital, as a head of medical support at Bandung Adventist Hospital from 2020 until. 21. As the deputy medical officers of this hospital uh, from 2021, uh, from January maybe until present. The second second speakers is Dr. Mary. Legal. Dr. Grace is the first speaker, Pastor. Oh, yeah? <laughs> okay, okay. The uh, second speaker, as uh, I'm introduced. Dr. Grace is the first speaker. Ah, okay. Okay. And this. The. Uh, as a general practitioner, as a medical doctor from Sampratulangi University, Manado, in 95, and for specialist in clinical pathologies from the University of Indonesia, Jakarta, in 2008, and the second specialist infection consult consultant from hospital or university Bandung until and her work experience as a head of medical support in Bandung Adventist Hospital 2016 until until now head of laboratories installation in Bandung Adventist Hospital from 2008 until now Head of the Committee of Medical Record, Bandung Adventist Hospital from 2017 and 2020. Head of the Committee of Antibiotic Stewardship, Adventist Hospital in 2018. Head of Outpatient from Bandung Adventist Hospital from 2001 until 2020. As a general practitioner, as medical doctor from Bandung Adventist, as, as a general practitioner, medical doctor in Bandung Adventist Hospital from 1999 until 2003. As a head of Saliati Public Health Center, from 
Lubuk Panggai Central Sulawesi from 1995 until 1998. Okay. It is now my pleasure uh, because as interest to the speaker and for the Dr. Chris Neri Lego, the Zoom room and time yours. Thank you, Pastor Abri, for the introduction. And uh, we ask the IT from Bandung Adventist Hospital to start the video because we already record the presentation. Please, Mr. Henry. Brothers and sisters in Jesus, it's a privilege for me to be here to share the wonderful and amazing things that God has done for us at Bandung Adventist Hospital. Dr. Joyce will share the strategies that have been implemented in Bandung Adventist Hospital during the pandemic. But before Dr. Joyce, I will share about how marvelous God is, especially for us, laboratory unit of Bandung Adventist Hospital during the COVID-19 pandemic. I'm a clinical pathology specialist in laboratory, and the laboratory unit currently has 41 staff. Here is our happy picture, and also some picture of our staff and activities. And this is a picture of one of our morning worship. Brothers and sisters, before pandemic, we always ended the worship with our prayer while holding hands. But after pandemic, we cannot do that anymore. And this is the picture of me and my assistant on our first swap for PCR test in ICU on March 4, 2020. And this is the biomolecular subunit, which is the room where the PCR test is done. We started our first PCR for COVID-19 test on August 4, 2020. Because of the large number of patients, we provide a walkthrough service for nasopharyngeal swab. And in pandemic era, our worship still change, but our spirit getting stronger by the grace of God. And this is the graphic of the total PCR tests performed monthly in 2020 and 2021. So we already did PCR tests for almost 270,000 patients. God is always good to us. So we do believe in the Lamentation tree for 22-23. It is the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. And now I want to continue to share about the topic. Am I immune to COVID-19? By the definition, what's the meaning of immune? According to Cambridge Dictionary, there are three meanings of immune. And the second meaning is really related to vaccine, relating to the production of antibodies or lymphocytes that can react uh, with a specific antigen. 
And what is vaccine? We know that vaccine is a substance that is deliberately made to stimulate the production of antibodies and provide immunity against one or several diseases prepared from the causative agent of a disease, its products, or a synthetic substitute treated to act as an antigen without inducing the disease and it is hoped that the body will be immune to the disease or only mild illness. And what is vaccination? Vaccination is the process or an act of giving someone vaccine. It can be through injection or drinking or spray. When a person gets vaccinated against a disease, the risk of infection is also reduced. So they are also less likely to transmit the virus or bacteria to others. As more people in a community get vaccinated, fewer people remain vulnerable and there is less possibility for uninfected person to pass the pathogen one to another person and lowering the possibility for a pathogen to circulate in the community protects those who cannot be vaccinated due to health condition like allergy or their age from the disease targeted by the vaccine. That's the point of herd immunity. I think most of us know about this already. And we are talking about COVID-19. COVID-19 is the name of the disease of coronavirus infection. And the name of its virus is SARS-CoV-2, which stands for severe, a severe acute respiratory syndrome related to coronavirus 2. Currently, there are two types of vaccines available in Indonesia, namely Sinovac and AstraZeneca. And this is the composition of the vaccine consists of active ingredients and inactive ingredients. The main ingredients is the active one, namely antigen. I think we uh, all uh, often hear about antigen. And the other are adjuvant for enhance of vaccines effect, the preservative and the stabilizers. And here are the six platforms of vaccine or types of COVID-19 approach vaccine. The first contains a harmless leaf virus and has the specific COVID-19 virus gene to build immunity. For example, AstraZeneca and Johnson and uh, then Johnson and Johnson's too. And the second and also the third contains the DNA or RNA, which is the genetic material of COVID-19 virus. Examples DNA like Moderna or Pfizer BioNTech. And the fourth contains protein subunit. A, play, a piece, a, a protein subunit is a piece of virus surface protein to focus our immune system on a single target. For example, Novavax and Flinders. And the fifth platform contains an activated COVID-19 virus after it has been killed with heat or chemical and for example Sinopharm just like used in Indonesia and Sinopharm and the last or the sixth is contains leaf attenuated COVID-19 virus or the weakened version of virus and for example codonix. And this is the more detailed picture of vaccine platforms. 
and brothers and sisters, the majority of the vaccines require two doses to provide clinical protection against the SARS-CoV-2 virus. And there are more than 200 vaccines in preclinical and clinical development. Until May 7, there are eight vaccines approved for full use, including Sinovac, which are used in Indonesia. And here are the leading vaccines in the world. And in this picture, we can see the schematic picture of the virus. The virus has four important structural proteins. And the most important proteins which related to immunity is spike or S protein. For S protein is the part of the virus which attach in the receptor. I call it the chair of our cell, which is the site that provides door for virus to get into our body cell. For example, nasopharyngeal or lung cell. And how is the process? the body immunity after vaccination. We can see in this slide, sorry for complicated picture, we can see S protein or spike protein consists of two domains, namely S1 and S2, which are, which are responsible for the binding step. Remember the binding step. S1 domain contain RBD protein, receptor binding protein. I think RBD is one of the most famous name in scientific world now, brothers and sisters. RBD is the protein which is involved in whole cell receptor recognition and binding. Whereas as two domain, as two domain contain the putative fusion protein so that the virus can enter into our cell and replicate for our cell for survival. Please remember the RBD receptor binding domain. For this side is so important part related to the immunity. Because we know that the nature of the virus is the virus can't live without get into inside our body cell. So the site of the attachment of the virus and our cell surface is so crucial in immunity process. We can prevent the attachment of the virus into our cells. That's the situation we can defeat the virus because the virus will be killed or will be destroyed by other immune cell. Please remember, my brothers and sisters, and defense against microbes, including virus, is mediated by the early reactions of inert immunity and the later responses of acquired of, uh, or adaptive or we call specific immunity. And one of the most important cell in the inert immunity to defeat virus, it is the natural killer cell. And the target of vaccination is to have antibodies against the virus. That's the second part of the response, or the response of the, Im the immune response that we uh, desire. And remember the definition of the vaccine, as I mentioned earlier, Vaccine is deliberately made to stimulate the production of antibodies. And brothers and sisters, actually the most immunity expected from vaccination is specific immunity. Specific immunity that consists of two parts. 
first humoral response which produce antibodies we already saw the uh, diagram and the second cellular response which produce potent cellular to destroy virus or microbe and in this slide or in this picture we can see the immune response to vaccination of all or traditional platform just like the inactive virus and protein subunit remember the six platform and there are some complicated but so amazing to amazing pathway to produce immunity in our body i always love to learn the immunity because it shows us how amazing God is in creating our body. Brother and sister, when we get vaccine injection, the vaccine material, especially the antigen, will interact with APC or antigen presenting cells and then we'll have uh, we'll have two pathway after the uh, conjunction it have some signaling signaling cytokine cytokines and the result of the process are the production of the antibodies and the potent cellular immune we can see the two pathway and for dna and rna vaccine platform require one step before the apc role just like what i have explained and this is the picture of the step before apc level of dna and rna vaccine of virus factor platform and now why are antibodies usually as the most monitored area of the vaccination result because in laboratory aspects measurements of antibodies is easier more simple cheaper and is also a routine procedure because of the production of antibody of spike protein or S protein is the focus of vaccine monitoring. Here is one of the more detailed schematic picture of humoral immune response that I like to show you. I put consecutive numbers in this picture to show the sequence of the process. I don't have much time to explain in more detail, but in the step of number five, we can see that the active lymphocyte B cell named plasma cell will produce the antibodies, which is shown like letter Y. We can see this is the uh, picture and in the number six, a specific talk about antibodies to S antigen, especially antibodies to S RBD. Remember, RBD is the region binding domain of the virus to attach on our surface cell at ACE2 receptor. We see at the step of number six, the S RBD antibodies will bind specifically in RBD region so that the virus cannot bind to our cell. That means the virus will die by our other immune cell because the virus cannot enter our cells. Remember, the nature of virus is they cannot live without enter our cells. I hope this is not too complicated for you. The antibodies which prevent the virus enter to our cell, namely neutralizing antibodies. This picture shows how the neutralizing antibodies will cover the virus and then the other immune cell called phagocyte cell will destroy the virus because the virus cannot enter inside the cells. This is we call naturalizing antibodies. And what is the pattern antibodies to fight COVID-19 virus? 
as I mentioned before, that the potent antibodies to fight the COVID-19 virus is naturalizing antibodies. In more specific, it's as RBD antibodies. Spacer in his journal show this illustration picture of how antibodies specific for SRBD will not only bind to S or spike antigen virus, but will also naturalize the virus, whereas the other S antibody won't do that. Hope this picture will help you to understand. Now, the question is, will everyone who get vaccinated have naturalizing antibody? The answer is no. I will explain the why in the next slide. Antibody with its symbol as a capital letter A and letter B, also called immunoglobulin with its own symbol, capital letter I and letter G. In humans, there are three isotypes of antibodies or immunoglobulins that have been the target of COVID-19 laboratory serological tests, IgM, IgG, and IgA. And most respiratory viruses, including COVID-19 virus, induce IgM followed by IgG and also IgA antibody responses. And brother and sister, naturalizing antibody or NAD is a major IgG. A test discovers that IgM antibodies may indicate ongoing infection, while IgG in the absence of IgM may indicate clearance of the virus. And the most obvious isotype to be induced by a COVID-19 vaccine is IgG. And the major IgG will be the naturalizing antibody. And nowadays, there is our target, the major immunoglobulin G. This slide shows that IgM is the first antibody released and followed by other IgG. Not all the types of antibodies that your body produces is potent to overcome the COVID-19 virus. Here are some information about naturalizing antibodies. The more severe the clinical symptoms, the higher the antibody level. And you can read, and in post-vaccination patient, naturalizing antibodies significantly increase after 14 to 80 to 28 days of second injection. And how to check if you have naturalizing antibody in your body? The gold standard method in laboratory to detect the naturalizing antibody is VNT or viral naturalization test. The technical terminology is PRNT or plaque reduction naturalization test. In the right side, we can see the diagram showed the VNT method, which is a complica uh, complicated technique, needs the high laboratory level, biosafety level, which is difficult to provide in a, a routine clinical laboratory setting. And here are some tests similar and a surrogate test for VNT. And the method that is often used to replace VNT is client method. The test can be done easily in a routine laboratory setting and quicker also. But we have to make sure, brother and sister, if the test detect the SRBD IgG or the total antibodies. In this picture, we can see the good correlation between naturalizing antibody with antibody IgG RBD in one of journal reports. This is a good result. And how do we know that we already have an naturalizing antibodies? Go to the laboratory and take it. But be careful, make sure that the result for antibody is as RBD, which correlates to naturalizing antibody. But brothers and sisters, there is no 
agreement yet of how many protective antibody titers are declared sufficient for COVID-19. According to recommendation from CDC or Center of Disease Control in USA, antibody testing is not currently recommended to access for immunity to SARS-CoV-2 following COVID-19 vaccination because the clinical utility of post-vaccination testing has not been established. The other reason is the antibody testing does not evaluate the cellular immune response, which may also plays a role in vaccine-mediated protection. I hope you still remember the two kinds of cellular immune response that I mentioned earlier in the specific immune response. And this is the features of several antibody assays as uh, are listed in the table. And the question is, does COVID-19 vaccine guarantee immunity? Not always. The impact of COVID-19 vaccine on the pandemic will depend on several factors. These include the effectiveness of the vaccines, manufacture, and delivered of the vaccines. Will's trial have shown several COVID-19 vaccines to have a high levels of efficacy like all other vaccines. COVID-19 vaccine will not be 100% effective. WHO is working to help ensure that approved vaccines are as effective as possible. I love this metaphor of the Swiss cheese respiratory pandemic defense by Sheoben Robert published in New York Times. It showed that multiple layers improve success. Multiple layers of production, you can see in this picture, imagine as cheese slices block the spread of the new coronavirus SARS-CoV-2. No layer is perfect, each one has holes, and when the holes align, the risk of infection increases. But several layers combine, just like social distancing, plus mask, plus hand washing, plus testing and tracing, plus ventilation, plus government messaging, significantly reduce the overall risk. Vaccination will add more protective layer. And one of the most important layer for success to defeat COVID-19 is your immune response. And your immune response depends on healthy lifestyle and in turn will help your vaccination to be effective. Brothers and sisters in Christ in Bandung Adventist Hospital, we have 10 health commandments, similar to New Start or celebration. We all do know that the health message is given by God through Mrs. Ellen T. White as the right hand of the evangelism. In the following slides, we learn about how healthy lifestyle will influence the effectiveness of vaccination. Brothers and sisters, we know that negative stress or bad social relationship will hamper the formation of antibody or immune cell. We can see some researcher proof it. You can uh, read it. And this is another explanation of how your lifestyle will impact into the vaccination effect. If you are vaccinated but don't have enough sleep, 
the formation of antibodies will be limited. In this feature, we can see sleep disturbance and the response of selective immunity. The hypothalamus, pituitary, adrenal axis distributes glucocorticoid hormones through the blood to regulate gene expression in virtually every cell of the body. Sleep disturbance results in hormone activation of the glucocorticoid. And sleep also induces the release of growth hormone. Brothers and sisters, during the early part of the night, remember the early part of the night, the growth hormone acts to enhance the proliferation and differentiation of T cells, one of the of our vital immune cells. So, sleep disturbance hampered T cells maturation and in turn interfere our immune response. And next, if you are vaccinated but have a high diet of animal products, the formation of antibodies will not be optimum. This is some slides, the following slides, so we can see the recommendation of healthy diet in the COVID-19 pandemic from Food and Agriculture Organization in the United States. This is another recommendation. Eat plenty of fruits and vegetables. And so do this. Watch your intake of, of fat, sugar, and also salt. Now, at the end of my presentation, I think we can answer this question. Am I immune to COVID-19? Before answer this question, be sure to do health protocol and have healthy lifestyle. And the next, get vaccination. May God always bless each one of us. Good afternoon, brothers and sisters in Christ who are watching the health program organized by Adventist Health Ministries from the SSD together with the West Indonesia Union Mission with the theme, Jesus Heals. Once again, warmest greetings from Bandung Adventist Hospital. We thank God who has blessed and guided our lives till this day that we can meet each other even though only through virtual Zoom. I would like to thank SSD, Memla Lane, thank you, and West Indonesia Union Mission, Pastor Jimmy Havlar, thank you, for providing the opportunity to share at this event. It is a great honor for me to participate in introducing the services of Bandung Adventist Hospital. So I will not explain anything about virus, but I would like to testimony, give a brief talk about how Bandung Adventist Hospital give the uh, services to the COVID-19 patients. And in the midst of coronavirus outbreak, we realize that we can do it only because of God's love and power. And I would like also to thank our director, Dr. Alvin Rantung, who support us for this presentation. Okay, now our topic of discussion this afternoon, while we serve in the pandemic era, Jesus heals. We have just heard the comprehensive explanation about vaccine, by Dr. Grace Legorantum. And now I would like to present to you the overview of how Bandung Adventist Hospital provides services to COVID-19 patients in one year experience 
which is happening from March 2020 to March 2021. Even though the services is not stopped only by that month, it's still going on until today. So, okay, let's start. According to Jakarta News, that from March 2020 to March 2021, data in Indonesia showed that there were 1,511,712 COVID patients and 40 million, 585 of those patients died. And from those who died, 718 of them were health workers, doctors, nurses, midwives. What a sad situation. And in fact, according to business.com news, the number of health workers who died in Indonesia is the fourth highest in the world. Wow, it's very, very sad. And as you know, the cases is still increasing until now. We do not know when this pandemic will end. Maybe the number of patients more than 1.7 million. And those who died more than uh, 560 or even reached to 600, 700. Well, brothers and sisters in Christ, looking at this, we really, really uh, feel the worriness. We feel that we are uh, in a situation that is very uncertainty. We hope that God will come soon, that we can enter the kingdom of heaven and live happily with our God. And as you know, now there is a new fear. According to the Indonesian Minister of Health, that the Indian mutated coronavirus has entered Indonesia. And moreover, there are two other variants of the coronavirus, namely from UK and South Africa. Of course, I will not go into discuss further regarding the process of virus mutation. But there is a question that all of us wants to know. What are the effects of these virus variants? It says that they reduce the efficacy of the vaccine. It increases the speed of spreading and increase the severity of the infection. So what should we do? Should we stay in our fearness and in our anxiety? Oh no, it might lower our immune system if we always think of the negative side. So now, to anticipate this situation, the Indonesian Minister of Health made the following policies that even though we have been vaccinated, we still must be careful. We still have to keep ourselves. By what? First, we run the standard health, such as wear your mask, wash your hands, keep your distance, stay away from the crowd, and limit mobility. Remember these five steps. And secondly, isolate the infected patients. And thirdly, carry out case epidemiology monitoring by means of careful examinations, such as anamnesis, laboratory findings, x-ray, case tracing, and provide holistic treatment. While talking about the holistic treatments, we talk, of course, combined with the lifestyle medicine. Lifestyle medicine already performed by, Indonesia, uh, by Bandung Adventist Hospital that always uh, been socialized to everybody that we have to keep the 10 rules of lifestyle. So with that lifestyle, with a good health, we, we can be sure that our immune, immune system is strong enough to avoid the infection of the virus COVID-19. Brothers and sisters in Christ, as God's people who have been called to serve at Bandung Adventist Hospital, we realize that fearness should not be an excuse to stop serving. 
And moreover, the Bandung Adventist Hospital is designated by the government as a referral hospital for COVID-19 patients. Therefore, March 27, 2020 is a milestone for Bandung Adventist Hospital in serving COVID-19 patients. All related units for the care of patients exposed to the coronavirus work as a team. This picture is a proof that the team works fast, full of enthusiasm, and were carefully accompanied by prayers and is always supported by our leaders. Changes continue to occur, starting from the expansion of the ward room, which was only a few rooms at first. Then it expanded to two floors, even to three floors. And of course, this will affect the management of human resources. In this matter are the nurses. At first, only a few nurses are willing to serve in that isolation room. Mostly are afraid of being infected. And of course, we have also to very carefully do the screening who are from those nurses are available or are strong enough to face the COVID-19 patients. So what we do is with braveness and many times with tears but always with prayers the services is going on even until today in the other hand there are several wards which is decreasing in number of admission because the non-covid patients were afraid to come to the hospital so what we did that wards are closed and the nurses are distributed to the isolation ward, of course, with a very careful screening. Now, how about the doctors? Oh, you know, there are not many doctors who are willing to serve, especially those doctors in above 60 years old of age. But again, we praise God that none of them get infected. So totally, we have 140, 141 beds for COVID patients and averagely, it filled up to 80 to 90%. And even several times, it filled up to 100%. And sometimes we have to refer the patients. We, are, we, we cannot afford to accept them because the room is full. And from that 140, 141 beds, it includes the critical care, where at first we have only five beds, and then it expanded to 12 beds. And also the emergency room, we equip with a negative pressure, which also used for emergency surgery, because our uh, operating room is not equipped by the negative pressure. So we, uh, we make the room in the emergency to be ready and equipped by the negative pressure for the emergency surgery. So far, there are five cases of C-section surgery have been performed to pregnant women with COVID-19. And praise the Lord that the mother and the baby went home with a good health. Next week, the former director of Bandung Adventist Hospital, Dr. Roy, will present a more complete explanation to illustrate how the director's policies were made with a brave heart, but full of submission in prayers. Don't miss the presentation next week. Okay, with the team unity and the team support within, within one year, Bandung Adventist Hospital has treated 1,865 COVID-19 patients, both coming from within Bandung and also from outside Bandung, with mortality rate of 6.2%. And this is due to comorbid, old age, and with high severity of infection when they came to this hospital. Now, in order to carry out standardized services, for quality and patient safety, mini teaching 
and information about the rules and regulation were delivered via Zoom to the nurses because there are a lot number of nurses. And if it is only a few attendants like the pharmaceutical staff or students, we do it in person. So we, we educate them. We tell them all the rules and regulation, what we have to do. How about the patients and their families? Oh, of course, we also educate them so they can understand how to uh, do the health protocols and how to keep themselves uh, safe and not being infected from the COVID-19 virus. And also to make them feel comfortable to be served in this hospital. How about our employees? Out of 701 employees who underwent swab examinations, 101 were positive. Some of them had no symptoms. Some had moderate to severe symptoms. And there are two employees who were admitted in the critical care. But thank God, they were all healthy again and are working as usual. Until now, 645 employees from total of 756 Bandung Adventist Hospital employees have been vaccinated. Brothers and sisters in Christ, we lifted our praise and our gratitude to God the Most High for all His blessings, for His guidance and His protection to each one of us throughout the one-year services for COVID-19 patients. And by this time, from, the, from this experience, what I have mentioned, we have witnessed several things. Number one, our God is so great compared to the struggles and fears that we face. Even though in an uncomfortable atmosphere, we have to work, we have to do the service. Why? Because we have to work under the personal protective equipment like using hazmat, helmet, double face mask with N95. Maybe you can imagine. It's really very hard to breathe and feel very hot, very hard to move. But we have to do it. And we have done it. And also, we are in limited human resources. The number of nurses that we have, not all are available to serve the isolation patient isolation room because we have to really do a good screening because if they are not in a fit condition, not in the good health, it is very dangerous to serve the COVID-19 patients. Of course, they will be easily to be infected. So we have to choose which nurses that are strong enough and is a perfect with a perfect health that can serve the COVID-19 patients. And but what we can say through all this experience that until this day, God is with us for sure. Number two, the feeling of happiness, watching the patients go back home in a good health actually boosts our immune system. Of course, looking at their smiling face and the word saying thank you for your service that makes us really very, very, uh, what is that, encouraging yeah, to do more services to the patients who are in need. And number three, in times of troubles, our faith grows. I can tell you, at first, we really live in a very, very, uh, what is that, uh, feel very afraid and we really uh, feel the uncertainty of what may happen to us. And we, we feel that we are very discouraged to come to work to the hospital. But as the days go by, as we do the service, we can feel that God always in our steps, that God is always in, uh, uh, beside us to help us to give strength and of course, we did this and we have this because through prayers, only through prayers, we, uh, we did uh, several times prayer and fasting.
together with our leaders. We, we strengthen up each other. We give courage to each other. So we want to serve the COVID-19 patients. And number four, this, uh, once again, the support from our leaders, along with prayers and testimonies from the survivors are really useful, very, very useful to give strength and courage in serving. Now, we have to understand, when God wants us to serve him, his word states as follow. I give you three verses from the Bible, from Colossians 3 verse 23, it says, whatever you do, work it with all your heart as working for the Lord and not to men. And in Ecclesiastes 9 verse 10 part A, whatever your hands finds to do, do it with your might. And Romans 8 verse 28, and we know that in all things, God works together for the good to those who love him who have been called according to his purpose. So we are, we are really, really being blessed by the privilege to serve the COVID-19 patients. We know that this is the high calling that God gives to, to each one of us. As a closure of my presentation, we will show a video showing the services of Bandung Adventist Hospital during the pandemic COVID-19 lively. So thank you so much for all your attention. May God bless us all. March 2nd, 2021 marked the exact one year of COVID-19 pandemic in Indonesia from when it was found for the first time. Until May 2021, there were about 1.7 million COVID-19 cases in Indonesia, which has taken many lives. In handling COVID-19 pandemic, Bandung Adventist Hospital was appointed by the government to be one of the referral hospitals to treat COVID-19 patients. To prevent transmission of COVID-19, we have implemented the health protocol in the hospital service and care and separate COVID and non-COVID patients. To break the chain of transmission, we have created boundaries for patients and other visitors so they would not share COVID-19 to one another. At the beginning of this pandemic, March 2020, the medical team found that it was very difficult to get personal protective equipment. Raincoats was used as a solution. But only because by the grace of God, there are so many donors who donate personal protective equipment to us. Since the beginning of this pandemic, we have started a new initiative in providing virtual health education for the public about how to deal with COVID-19 how to increase our immunity, and how to tackle chronic diseases with healthy lifestyle, which we call Hidup Sehat. And through this, we are preparing the community to be more prepared to face this pandemic. Another brand new initiative, we launched a 12-week program to reverse type 2 diabetes with a comprehensive lifestyle change. We have seen remarkable results. They were able to achieve better blood sugar level with less medication and less insulin. In sum, they were able even to stop their medication as well. New opportunities come even during the pandemic. We as Banu Adventist Hospital pray and hope that through this, we are preparing the community to be more prepared to face this pandemic. Okay, thank you. Praise the Lord. Thank you for the good presentation from uh, Dr. Lewis and Dr. Grace about your presentation and testimony to the knowledge uh, we need to know during the pandemic era about vaccine, about antibody, about uh, test antibody and more. And God bless you all. Uh, because I see there are no questions in the chat room. Maybe if anyone wants to ask, please immediately 
turn on your microphone and please ask directly and Dr. Grace and Dr. Joyce will answer it. Please. Or you feel also clear for presentation today? It's too clear or? <laughs> Praise the Lord. Oh, thank you. Um, okay. To those of us, yes? Maybe it is complicated, the explanation of vaccine. <laughs> oh, uh, sorry, uh, sorry for the uh, blur. A uh, video, uh, probably, yeah, Pastor. No okay. question, Pastor. Okay. No question. <laughs> okay, thank you so much. I have one question for Dr. Grace. Uh, okay, Pastor. How about the um, effect the, vaccine uh, for the long term? How about the effect vaccine for the long term? Okay. This is uh, it good I, for us or not? Uh, because, uh, Pastor, you know the. Uh, Dr. Guest, was it a tutu? I can hear you. Yes. It's clear, Pastor? Hello? Hello, Am I... I Dr. Grace. Sudah ngerang? Okay. Okay, Dr. Grace, maybe. Okay. Um, how long, uh, the question is, uh, how long the impact of the vaccine, right? Uh, Pastor, because the the vaccine is just uh, for not yeah just for several months. It's hard to say the efficacy for long term, but based on the SARS-CoV-1, uh, they see that I want to look for the report for the SARS-CoV-1. Uh, I want to share in, uh, yeah, it's about 90 uh, of patient has antibodies after two years and after three years of post infection, this is the infection and the IgG is still there, but because the SARS-CoV-2 is just for one year and also the vaccine just almost several months so it's hard to uh, conclude for long-term protection maybe that's all i can uh, answer pastor but we can we can see for uh, from the because similar the virus similar to sars-cov-1 and if see the sars-cov-1 immune response and we also see the clinical uh, impact for SARS-CoV-2. 80% is uh, mild or no uh, symptom. Uh, it means that uh, almost or most the, of the people will, will have antibodies. But how about the vaccination? It's hard to conclude for long-term protection because uh, we don't have any history uh, or experience according to this new virus. Uh, that's all I, I could answer, Pastor uh, Havelar. Thank you very much. Why I, I give the question like that? Because we have many type for the vaccination like that. That's why this one say like this, we say like, like that. Sorry. Thank you. Uh, but maybe I had some more. If you have a, or uh, your immune re response is good, so don't worry because uh, your uh, body will uh, stimulate the antibodies or uh, the other cell, uh, as I 
explained in my presentation, the cellular response is also an uh, important pathway, but it's difficult to check in the laboratory. I mean, uh, for easy way to check is antibodies, but the immune response is not solely depend on antibodies, but the other cells, which is difficult to check in laboratory routine. Uh, maybe that I can add for uh, the question. Okay, maybe anything else? Okay. Or, I, I have a question in the morning for Dr. Joyce. Yes, Pastor. Why, why the pregnant woman cannot, cannot get the vaccine for that? Ah, uh, yeah. Thank you, Pastor, for the good question. Uh, perhaps, yeah, this is a very new, yeah, this is a very new event. Uh, and also, there are still study going on, uh, Pastor, about the, the effect of the vaccine to the pregnant woman. So that's why we just, uh, uh, what is that? We just suggest that better for the safety, yeah, for the safety, we better avoid it to get the vaccine uh, during pregnancy. Okay. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you. Uh, hello, sorry, I am Bethany from Malaysia, but here in Malaysia, doctor, I would like to know your opinion. Here in Malaysia, our government urge all the pregnant women, a breastfeeding woman, to take the Pfizer vaccine, and it's okay, they said, but many of us Malaysian are a bit um, not happy with this thing, but since government said that there's a few mother pregnant or breastfeeding mother already took the vaccine and so far so many mixed um saying around um about it but i'm not sure what do you think about this doctor thank you ma'am thank you for the question yes. so uh, yeah maybe we do not know yeah this is the policies or this is the what is that the suggestion from the government for the pregnant woman? But for the breastfeeding, I think we gave it, yeah, Dr. Grace? Yeah, we, we gave it to the uh, breastfeeding uh, mother. But for the pregnant woman, because there is no study going on, so the government is still not allowing us to give it. And also the type of vaccine that we use in Indonesia is uh, Sinopharm. Yours is Pfizer, right? I don't know what is the... Yes. The, the yeah. government only um, allow a Pfizer vaccine Pfizer, for yeah. pregnant and okay. breastfeeding. Um, yeah. yeah. Here in Indonesia, we use Sinovac, ma'am. So we did not allow for the pregnant woman. Okay, thank you, Doc. Yeah, welcome. For uh, maybe I add some more if uh, I could. Uh, we can uh, see in WHO. Um, uh, website, uh, the Moderna and Pfizer, there is some uh, studies for pregnant women, so they allow it for pregnant women. But yeah. I don't see Sinovac. Sinovac, that's why. No study yet. No study yeah. Yet. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Uh, doctor, one more question. Um, before we had this um, COVID-19 uh, virus, the normal virus, but nowadays, especially here in Malaysia, uh, we have all the three variants in our country already. So what is your suggestions or yes advice for us, for all of us here? How are we going to face this new variant? Because it's totally different from the first virus happened in our place before. Okay, uh, may, may, uh, Pastor, uh, please give me uh, one or two more minutes to 
share about the fairy and or Newton. Yeah, because the, this is the uh, hot topics everywhere. Uh, we know that uh, the SARS-CoV-2 virus is, is uh, evolving now, just like the man uh, mentioned. But uh, we already have to remember by, uh, about the natural evolution of the virus because more evolving, it will be more uh, mutation for virus because it is uh, his or not his. It's a natural, uh, yeah, uh, sorry, my. Natural evolution for the virus. So the virus can uh, survive. So it is good for us to understanding uh, that the mutation is a natural situation. And uh, there are thousands of mutation of COVID-19 virus nowadays, but uh, maybe we can know about two classification of the variant or mutant. The first is variant of interest and the second is variant of concern. The variant of uh, interest is the virus have mutation, but there is no study that there are change in clinical or in environment. So need further study. But the second uh, variant is they call, uh, the scientists call variant of concern. The virus has, uh, the mutant has demonstrated uh, changes. For example, uh, increase in transmiss uh, transmissibility or in disease presentation or severity, or uh, ability to control the virus in the public health and social measure. So the important uh, mutant is the mutant of fire, uh, variant of concern, mutant. And uh, nowadays, uh, WHO uh, proclaimed the, there is four, yeah, uh, four um, mutant. Newton or four variants of concern, the B117 from UK, we already know that, and also 1351 from South Africa, and uh, the other P1, P1 from Brazil, and the latest is the B1617, which for uh, which was first identified in India. And we can uh, look that information in WHO uh, website. Uh, but uh, uh, if I'm not mistaken, the, the question is how can we know? We can only know by the um, test called whole genome sequencing. And the test is not provided in the routine laboratory. We have to send it, the sample into referral, uh, the center the, in Indonesia we call Puslit Bankes, and some of the referral, uh, special referral laboratory. Uh, it's, uh, it cannot detect it by routine PCR. So uh, the clinician will, um, uh, will think about the mutant if the clinical outcome, outcome is very uh, different with the uh, wild or the former uh, clinical of COVID-19. So it's not easy. And, uh, usually, it will be detected from surveillance, not for clinical uh, examination or clinical laboratory tests. Hope that will answer your question, ma'am. Yeah, thank you, ma'am.
Okay, no more question. I think it's enough. And thank you, Dr. Grace and Dr. Joyce for the answering uh, question. And to those of us who feel blessed with a presentation and testimonies today, please show, show your gratitude by say amen. 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 Praise the Lord. And thank you so much uh, also to the Miss Gabriela Haflar as a translator today to Bahasa. Okay. Now, time to presentation of certificate. Please, Miss, uh, Miss, Mrs. Lele. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Pastor Abri. Thank you so much also to Dr. Grace and Dr. Joyce for a very, very balanced presentation. It is absolutely packed with a lot of information. And the double treat is, you know, the amazing news about the tremendous amount of work uh, in, you know, Bandung Adventist Hospital in preventive and lifestyle medicine in preparing the community face the pandemic. So again, Dr. Joyce, Dr. Grace, terima kasih banyak, terima kasih banyak. Okay, now for the certificate of appreciation in grateful recognition and appreciation for Dr. Grace Lego. I hope I pronounce it well, Dr. Grace, uh, for imparting her in for her valuable insights to the participants of the Health Watch webinar series with the theme Jesus Heals, organized by the West Indonesia Union Mission Adventist Self Ministries Department in coordination with Southern Asia Pacific Division Health Ministries Department. Given this 20th day of May in the year of our Lord 2021, this is signed by our very own Health Ministries Director of West Indonesia Union Mission, uh, Pastor Dr. Jimmy Havilar, and also in C. Alfonso and our treasurer, uh, Dr. Max Langi, our executive secretary, Pastor Rudy Baluyo, and our president, Pastor Samuel So. Again, thank you, Dr. Grace and Dr. Joyce. And uh, we are looking forward for next, uh, next Thursday, we have another medical doctor coming again from Bandung Adventist Hospital. So I hope that uh, you will show the, uh, Jessica will show the, um, the poster for our webinar next week. And, okay, so this is um, Dr. Roy. Okay, this is Dr. Roy David Sarum Pait. Okay, and this is another interesting, uh, interesting webinar about our immune system. And this is very, very important, especially now that we have this pandemic. And I also would like to announce to you that for the month of July, it will be South Philippine Union Conference who will, um, who will uh, sponsor the webinar. So again, we have four medical doctors who will give the lecture. Uh, on the first Thursday of the month of June, it will be a nephrologist, Dr. Doble. And then we have, for the second week of June, we have a medical doctor working in the Department of Health in Mindanao, Dr. Siban. And on the third week, we have, we will have the spokesperson of the Department of Health in Visayas, Dr. Lureche, and a pediatrician, Dr. Dimafiles, and she will be our speaker on the fourth week of the month of June. So um, it's full pack this month of May and on to the month of June. And we would like again to request everyone to please, um, please invite your friends, your church members, your office mates, your hospital workers uh, to, uh, to watch this uh, regular webinar every Thursday brought to you by the unions and the health ministries department of southern asia pacific division thank you again everyone
I'm now turning this over to Pastor Jimmy Havilar. Pastor Jim. Thank you very much to all participants here, especially for Dr. Grace and Dr. Joyce Tobing. So already give us the presentations, beautiful presentations. May the information to give us can we uh, give us the help and we can continue to prepare our help. Thank you to Gabby too, Gabriel, to translate our uh, our presentation this afternoon. Thank you, Dr. Alain, and thank you to all of us. See you to the next uh, coming coming Thursday. Thank you very much. Thank you. Terima kasih banyak. Thank you. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you. And all Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Jessica, let's have a photo with our guest speaker, with our resource speaker. Gabriel. And we have a photo session. Uh, kindly turn on your videos, everyone, so that we can see your beautiful and handsome faces. Hello, my mother. 